Neuropsychiatric symptoms of dementia, also known as behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, are extremely common. People often experience more than one symptom, and they can worsen over time. Symptoms can include anxiety, depression, agitation, apathy, socially inappropriate behavior, psychosis, sleep disturbances, and more. These symptoms can be incredibly challenging and can often lead to social isolation due to stigma. Our expert conversations with a clinician, family caregivers, and those living with Alzheimer's disease aim to shake the stigma of talking about NPS to help you create a care plan and get the support you deserve. Neuropsychiatric symptoms is that range of symptoms that are expressed that are due to underlying changes in the brain and the brain's ability to have chemicals that transmit messages between brain cells and then our own emotions that arise as well and our ability to then express those emotions. Those are the symptoms that on a day-to-day -day basis are most distressing, most bothersome both to the person experiencing them, if they remember them, and to the people around them. I actually lived with my mom kind of as she went from the earlier stage to more middle and late stage Alzheimer's. It was challenging and confusing. Um, and there were a lot of things she experienced that I just wouldn't have known were associated with Alzheimer's disease. And there were just so many nuances to like how to, I guess, understand what she was experiencing and like what, what she needed from from us to feel safe or feel um, feel grounded, I guess, in, in what was real. I'm a decent communicator, but when it comes to having to sort of think through stuff, I find it more difficult. I can't think on my feet like I used to. And, and that is really frustrating and, it re and quite honestly, I get very agitated and angry with myself. When it comes to the neuropsychiatric symptoms, I worry about agitation, the anxiety, and sometimes the paranoia. It's tough because part of it, it can be paranoia. The other part of it can be reality. My personality changes. So for me, like there be moments where I don't know where it come from, where you suddenly, no, I don't want, you, you're very uh, to the point, no, I don't want to do that, or no, I'm not going to do that. It's almost like a, a, a child has a temper tantrum. No one has said to me or questioned why I would be asking them about neuropsychiatric symptoms. They are generally relieved that someone has asked the question and made the space for them to talk about how they feel and their own experiences. I was very excited about like how to explain neuropsychiatric symptoms, especially in the early stages of Alzheimer's, because to me that was like the biggest gap that I, I was missing when I was a caregiver. Oh my gosh, that is such a relief of the stress because you finally can talk to someone that can understand you or that can make a recommendation to make life easier for you. I think a, a big part of my care plan is sort of the quality of life and, and living, living well. And I'll be honest, you know, it's, you know, I can, I can go down the line. You know, for me, it's just taking care of myself. It's seeing a therapist, it's taking my drugs, it is um, making sure that I'm exercising. The biggest thing though, part of my care plan, it's keeping my brain active, and that's the socialization. It's my friends, it's my family, it's doing my radio show that, you know, I have nine listeners right now. I'm trying to get to double digits. Um, but it's doing those things that I love. Research, use your resources, get people around, um, go to meetings, go to caretaking meetings, um, because you will need all of that. All of that is helpful. Get into some support groups. Um, you can't do it by yourself, even though if you think you can, you can't do it by yourself. You have to be able to talk to 
someone about these challenges, not just for for um, the patient, but as its caretaker. So you have to have somebody you can trust. I think hope is, is to me the most important message. As a glass half full kind of person, hope is really important. And understanding there are a lot of resources out there. I don't want the label of Alzheimer's, early stage, whatever it is on my forehead. I really don't. But, but I'm more than that. And I think it's, you know, reducing that stigma and letting people know, look at me. I'm living life. I'm living life. Sometimes, you know, I want to take over. And I was told by um, a, a really wonderful person of when to walk in front of my mother went to walk on the side of my mother, and went to walk behind my mother. And that was, that's been, you know, that sticks with me every day. Because sometimes I, I want to lead and it's not time to lead. And sometimes I need to be on the side and just understand. And sometimes I need to let her do her thing. Focus on what you can do right now. When you get your diagnosis, stop looking at the things that, the ugly stuff about it. Turn it into what you can do to grip it into something positive. So while we're getting it, we can't just sit there by the dock of the bay and, and feel sorry for ourselves. No, live, get up and live, get up and go, get up and advocate, get up and say, find a cure. You know, get excited about something that you're mad about this, but yes, I'm gonna do something about this. I'm not gonna stand still. I'm not gonna sit still. I'm gonna live.